hello hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel if you are new make sure and hit that like button hit that subscribe follow me i know i've been a little inactive you guys it's been a little hectic in my life lately but nevertheless i'm gonna get back on it i'm gonna get back to making new videos um let me know in the comments below what you want to see if you want to see more of my lifestyle every day if you want to see what i do work wise um every day make sure and drop a comment hit that like button subscribe all that good stuff um so today i am going to kind of just be doing like an introduction video into <laughs> myself and what i do a little bit i've had yet to make a video on here for you guys kind of more of like an introduction into everyday life of me and high maintenance lashes uh, I believe I do have all my information below. Make sure to follow my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. I actually uh, have a lot of exciting things working for you guys. So, yes. Anyways, we're going to get straight into it. I'm going to just kind of give you guys a little insight into my background, how I kind of got started lashing, and all of that good stuff. <sighs> Whenever... Everyone's kind of like, how did you go into the industry? Like a lot of people think it's super easy. A lot of people think you just like start doing lashes one day and like, boom, you have clientele and you're busy. No, it's not how it is at all. Actually, um, whenever I first started, I was probably how most of you guys or gals are. I was in between jobs. I was working like 80 90 hours every two weeks trying to make a good paycheck just to pay my rent just to pay my bills just to pay all my necessities pretty much and it was nothing i could live off of and it was super stressful because i was always working so many hours and really just not getting good feedback and and also pay <laughs> which is you know why a lot of us are always resorting to side hustles and things like that um, I actually was working three jobs when I started lashing. I was a server at night at Teddy Jack's and I also worked at a, uh, what, what's it called? Not a nursing home, more of like, more of like for older people who are able to take care of themselves. Uh, but anyways, I was working there as well, doing hair and nails, um, for the older ladies. And I really enjoyed that. It just, it was really morning hour time, anywhere from like eight to two. And then I would go and if I had a client, I would lash them anywhere from like two to four because after five o'clock I had to go to my serving job and go work all night to make money. Uh, so whenever I first started lashing, I didn't, I was really fed up with the lifestyle guys. So like I said, I was working at Eskimo Hut at the time. I worked there for about like a year and a half or two years so. Or so um, I was also in school I was going to college for nursing and one day it just kind of hit me that I did not want to be doing this lifestyle <laughs> I and then I thought you know well if I go into actual nursing I mean I'm really gonna be away from my family from my boyfriend from everybody because you know you're always studying constantly working uh, and all of my nurses out there, y'all know exactly. And I'm also kind of glad I didn't. I hate to say it that way. Um, but seeing us being in this pandemic really, really made me appreciate the lifestyle I chose for myself after all. So I'm kind of jumping around from topic to topic. So let me just say this. I started off working at Eskimo Hut, right? I was working anywhere from 80 to 90 hours, sometimes 100 plus hours every two weeks trying to make that paycheck. And I just thought to myself, like there has to be more to life than me just working for a paycheck every single day. I mean, I'm working from, sometimes I'd go in from 12 in the afternoon to seven. I mean, but that's kind of your whole day. If you think about it, you get up early in the morning, uh, maybe eat breakfast, work out, do whatever, and then go to work. And then you're working from 12 to seven o'clock at night, get off work, try to do homework. And which they say, you know, you need four hours to get a good homework schedule. And yeah, no, I like, I would study maybe for like an hour, not even got, got, a, got a good hour of studying out. And then 
I would just be so over it. I just, I hated, I hated the lifestyle that I had and I was super angry and very, I would take it home, I would take it to work and then sometimes take it out on either um, my coworkers or even just, you know, a customer. And then I'd go home and I'd take it out on my boyfriend because I was so mad of just the lifestyle that I had. And it really frustrated me. And that's when it clicked in my head. I was like, okay, I need to find something that I really truly enjoy doing that doesn't feel like work. The same thing they always tell us, you know, like, make sure you find something you love to do and it shouldn't be about money because you need to enjoy what you're doing. But I kind of got a double whammy out of it because I, you know, found something that you can make very good money off of if you put in the work and if you put back into your education. Um, but I graduated from Lubbock High with my cosmetology degree. And of course, once I got out of high school, I thought I'm just going to go straight into the field. And I didn't. I went for nursing. And a lot of people were like, oh, why'd you go for nursing? And I just, I honestly thought that was the closest thing to cosmetology that I kind of have studied for because cosmetology of course we have to know everything about hair skin and nails and anatomy of the body and things like that um so I thought nursing was going to be the second best thing um also my you know my mom wanted me to go to nursing as well so I just thought okay you know uh I will go and I'll try to do it my first two years uh I went for RN at I went for RN school at uh, South Plains. Very, very hard. If anybody knows about how hard their nursing programs are, very hard. So my third year, I was going for, I was going for, uh, my third year, I took a bunch of makeup courses because my GPA was so kind of shot after going for RN for two years. And anyone who knows uh, classes such as anatomy and even math, just basic math is super hard for me. So <laughs> that was really, really hard. Uh, after the third year, I got my GPA back up and then I tried to go for LVN. LVN is right below RN, so it's a little bit easier, but it's still hard in the same sense. Um, so I went for that. I took my prerequisite, my prerequisites, and then I passed all of those. And then I go to take my tests. Um, I think, I believe you had to do like an English test and, um, English, uh, writing and math. Of course, pass the English. English and writing has never been hard for me, so I passed that very easily. The math, I believe I had to take maybe two times or so before I passed it. And then once I passed it, and was able to apply for actual LVN school, I was like, nope, I'm done. I am out of here. I do not want to do this anymore. And that was the same time I just was like really trying to find myself um, because I didn't know what I wanted as a person. I knew what everybody else wanted. I knew what my boyfriend wanted. I knew what my mom and parent, my mom and dad wanted, but I did not know what I wanted to do. And it's so crazy because whenever you're younger, you're always like, you know, everyone always asks you, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? And we give them all these outrageous um, answers and <laughs> of what we want to do, whether it be a nurse or a doctor or a beauty pageant queen or, you know, anything like that. So, but once we get older, I think it's more or less of what you want to do as a person and more of like what other people think you should be doing or maybe what your parents think you should be doing or just if you have someone relying on you that's where it can kind of get tricky as well um i didn't really have anything like that i luckily did not get caught into like all the financial stuff of having you know a bunch of bills to pay from school and stuff like that but anyway so i just was like okay i have my cosmetology degree why am i sitting here you know not figuring out or why am I sitting here still trying to figure out careers and jobs when I have a career right here? And I always knew, not always, I, I, that's a lie. I knew once I got into cosmetology school that I was like a girly girl and I really, really liked it. Um, 
my years probably like first through honestly first through 10th grade i was always a tomboy i was always playing basketball volleyball i like sports i liked being athletic but i think i did it more so for my dad's sake and so that way we kind of had something to bond over and then once i hit high school i played for about a couple of years i went to lubbock high we all know lubbock high sucks at their um <laughs> at their athletics so <laughs> I hate to say it. I love I love Love Kai. We tried so hard many times, but we just we had more heart than what we than what we left on the field apparently. But anyways, um, yes. Yeah, so played sports for a little bit. Didn't really didn't really work out for me. I was like, okay, now I need to see what I really want to do because I know I'm not gonna go pro and go play basketball because I'm like, I mean, let's be real. Like, I mean, five five. Five two, five four, a little short Mexican girl. I'm not really gonna go play <laughs> basketball professionally. Um, anyway, so I thought so that kind of cleared out of my head. And once I got into cosmetology, I really loved being girly. I loved having my hair done, my nails done. I loved doing my makeup, even though I wasn't the best at it. And I just really liked all these things that the beauty world had to offer us to make us women and men feel better about ourselves. Um, and that's one thing that I look back now and I see, you know, I really did have like, um, I always had this need to want to help people and make people feel better about themselves. So that's why I kind of went into nursing because I was like, well, I can really help people and make people feel better and kind of just be that that helpful hand now that i'm in the cosmetology career i'm doing the exact same thing i would have been doing in the nursing field i'm helping people i'm making people feel better about themselves um and i'm kind of opening that that door between you know beauty and um counseling in a way you know i really help my clients out a lot and they help me out a lot um and we really probably don't even recognize it but just the daily interactions and stuff like that i really so i feel like i'm still helping people i'm still doing something very good for my community and for myself um so yeah long story short i start to find out what am i going to do in this cosmetology field like what do i like um because i know whenever i graduated and i was going to college i worked at um, I believe it was sports clips. I worked at sports clips for a little bit and I absolutely loved it. I loved cutting men's hair. It was kind of tricky. I just, I know how people are about their hair, especially guys and especially women. So being in kind of that area field wasn't really my most strongest comfortable suit. I admit, um, hair intimidates me a lot only because I know how picky I am with my hair. So yeah. Um, but I was also going to school for like 40 hours a week. I don't know why I did that whenever I first started going to college. I was taking like 40 hours a week and I was going Monday through Friday. So, and then plus working plus school on top of that, it just was, it was a nightmare. Um, so I kind of crossed that off of my list. Then I reached out to, um, two of my aunts who have been in the beauty world for probably like 10 plus years. And I told them, I want to do something with my cosmetology career. I just don't know what I want to do. And they were like, I had one who has been in the hair industry. And then I had another aunt who was in the lash industry. Um, my aunt that was in the hair was like, well, you know, I can show you how to do color cuts, stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, if I was to do that, I would maybe would have thought of being a color specialist at once, one time. Um, but I just was like, eh, I don't, don't really know if that's something I would want to jump back into. Just because I know I tried out the hair for a little bit and it kind of just wasn't one of my stronger suits. Um, so then my other aunt was like, well, you know, I can show you how to do uh, lash extensions. And I was like, mm. I was like, okay. I wasn't too sure about it because A, I know you have to have like really good eyesight and I'm blind as a bat, if you can't tell. I'm wearing my glasses. Strongest prescription ever because one of my eyes is like 20-20 and the other one is like blind as 
shit. So, um, that was my main thing. I was thinking about being blind and like, how am I going to see those little bitty hairs on there? So I was like, mm, okay. And then I thought to myself, my hands, like my hands are not steady. Like I don't have steady hands. I've never had steady hands. Like that's why I can never do my own makeup. And that's why I can never do waxing or anything so precise because I was like, no, like there's no way I'm going to sort through all of these lashes and like apply one by one by one. And so I was already doubting myself. And I think that's one of our hardest, that's one of our biggest things as people is we're always, we're always our harshest critics. We're always telling our, we're always telling um, ourselves that we can't do something or like always giving ourselves a problem before we even try to, before we even try to do anything. So anyways, I sit in a couple of weeks. I kind of just watch her. She's not really telling me how to do it. She's just really letting me sit there and just watch everything she's doing. Um, but of course, I've seen all the products she used and um, how she went about doing each set. And then she was like, okay, like you need to try it on someone. And I was like, well, I don't have anyone to try it on. And she's like, well, you know, just tell people you're doing a free lash free lashes and people are always going to want something free even if you even if you suck people still want to try it out and so i was like okay so i just start posting on facebook um i'm doing lash extensions if someone wants to come in and by the way if you're watching this video and you were one of the ones who let me practice on you you're the real one you really are because <laughs> Um, I really think it was you guys who really helped me transition into the lash artist that I am now. Um, and I think that's just like with anybody, any, if, if you're a first timer and you have people that are willing to like, let you do something when you're like, you really don't know what you're doing and you, you know a little bit, but not enough to like feel completely comfortable. And I think that's with anything in the, in the, in the lash or in the beauty industry, like anything it's intimidating to try it on people and it's intimidating to do it first so if you let me put on a lash set sis whenever I didn't <laughs> not to say I didn't know what I was doing but to, like technically like I just was like super lost um you're the real one and I really really appreciate you uh because now I mean I have a really good income. I can take off a week if I want to. I can go travel when I want to. I can really do what I want to do. And being your own boss is incredible, but I'm getting kind of way ahead of myself. So let me back up. Um, so I sit in and I'm watching her, you know, do these lash sets and asking her questions. And of course, she's kind of letting me know, giving me all the tea and stuff like that. So I um, just, I start taking clients, guys. I start posting on Facebook. I start um, posting on Instagram. I mean, my work sucks. Like, <laughs> you can scroll all the way down through my Facebook posts and through my Instagram posts. And I, like, <laughs> I really, um, it was it was really hard at first. It was really, really hard at first. Not only because you're trying to remember each and every step, um, because it's something new, just like any place you go to, you have a new job, uh, you have a new protocol, you have a new way of doing things. So it's kind of intimidating at first because you don't really know what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, you don't really know the steps or the order you're supposed to go in. You're kind of just winging it pretty much. So at first it was very intimidating, not only because I did not feel comfortable with what I was doing, but because I'm also having these people walk in and they're like, hi, I'm here for your service. And you're like, okay, you know, trying to be friendly, trying to be nice, trying to keep conversation, trying to make them feel as most comfortable as po they possibly could be. Um, but then you forget, like, you're like, oh shoot, was I supposed to do that? Or was I supposed to do that? I don't remember which order I was supposed to go in. Um, so yeah, it was just really nerve wracking. Um, whenever I first started and I mean there'd be times where I'm like, okay I have to make sure I'm putting this tape down correctly. I have to make sure this pad isn't poking your eye I have to make sure I'm putting on the right set. Um, I don't and back then I didn't know a whole lot about like lash weight and um, app Appropriate weight you should be putting on lashes because everybody's natural lashes are different. I did not know 
I just didn't know a lot. I kind of learned backwards, if you may. I kind of like, I was still teaching myself in between. And of course, a lot of people are like, don't learn off YouTube. But I watched a lot of YouTube videos and then I purchased a lot of online courses. I'm not the best at online learning though, guys. I admit, like I'm a person who I learn better if we're face to face and I learn better if I'm actually watching it happen. Uh, so I'm really not a person who can read something and then be like oh, okay i can do it automatically which a lot of people aren't um but some people are so uh i definitely see how those uh online lash courses um are helpful and then i went and took my first in person in person course in dallas texas uh it was really really great i was working more on volume um and mega volume at this time because i had already gotten down classic and hybrid uh but it was more trying to work on my volume fans and make my sets a little bit more uh customizable um with making those fans so yeah uh and i mean it's it's a slow process guys like a lot of people think oh i'm gonna start doing lashes and like i'm gonna start making money in like a week and it's like no you're not you have to make you have to make you have to get clients in you have to start to build a relationship with people you have to feel comfortable in your skin you have to also make sure that you're putting good work out and you have to also make sure that you're taking care of your clients that are coming into you um i know like i mean it's crazy looking back now because like i said i've been doing this for about two and a half to three years and when i first started i mean i had no clue what i was doing and now i'm actually doing training and showing and helping people learn about lash extensions and uh the basics of them and the anatomy of lashes pretty much um and i'm also helping these people set up businesses i'm help i just did a course in june it was my first classic course and i believe i had maybe 11 or so girls in there and i can honestly say half of them are now doing lash extensions and they have their own clientele and they have their own thing going on and they are making them some money uh and so it's crazy to see it that way it happened so fast for them because my process was long i think it took me about eight or nine months before i actually started building steady clientele and making good money to where i had those same clients coming every couple of weeks they were like clockwork every two weeks uh it took me a while to get there like like i said it took me about eight or nine months before i started getting clientele in and then it still took me a process to have kind of keep those same people in. i had a lot of new people had a lot of traffic coming in and out but the goal is is to build you a clientele that are loyal to you and people that are constantly coming back like i said every two weeks like clockwork now i have that and now like i said i'm training i actually have my own space i just opened up in lubbock texas even though i'm currently living in fort worth um i got a space over there kind of after covid um cleared not clear i hate to say cleared up um after we had reopened after covid got us closed down i had i have a new space over there with my um brow girl her name is brow biz liz hit her up on instagram um twitter facebook she has all that good stuff as well she is at my new space um that we have together and it's called scr i couture and guys i'm just saying like this process is crazy like like i said when i first started out i mean i remember rolling i, I didn't have any products at all i had to borrow all of my aunt stuff and so and i didn't even have a space to do it in like i it was always one of those things where i'd be like um can i use this space or you know can i borrow y'all space because i don't i can't afford <laughs> to pay for a space right now because i just don't have clientele and of course my aunts were super helpful they were really great they were like yeah of course like don't worry about it once you kind of get started up picking up then you can worry about paying us and stuff like that and so i was like okay cool you know like this is pretty awesome because um most places you have to go in and you have to have clientele you have to be able to pay them if not then they're like get, get the f out of here man not to tell you or you're going to one of those places like amazing lash or somewhere where you're having to um sign a contract with them for like two, two years or so before you can go off into your own and even consider having something like what i have um but that's what i try to empower and invoice a lot in a lot of my classes and a lot of my training is that this industry is to build something 
I mean, you don't have to go on your own, but a lot of people do and a lot of people are successful or find you a business partner and kind of maybe de co collaborate or, you know, um, kind of do stuff together. Um, but you have to have, you have to have supportive people in this industry. It's very, very cutthroat sometimes. And sometimes you have those people that are like, no, I don't want to share my craft or no, I don't want to share anything with you. Um, because you're going to take away from me or you're going to take away from my, my clientele. Um, and that's one thing I always say in this industry is you have to be willing to help and you have to be willing to lift someone and, and allow someone to follow you. And I always tell my girls, I always, always tell my girls. If we all have the same ingredients to a recipe, to a sauce, it is going to taste different coming from all 10 of us because we all have our own way of doing things. So I tell people never be intimidated by, oh, the market's oversaturated or there's too many people doing lashes. Well, you know what? There's there's like 10,000 choices of bread when you walk down the bread aisle, but you don't let that stop you from doing something that you truly want to do. So I always tell, always tell my girls, um your brand is your authenticity and you are your own you are your own like no matter what the next person is doing or no matter what the person behind you is doing their paths are different from you so um that's why i love to share my story because i was a lot like maybe a lot of you are you're stuck in a dead-end job um you're stuck working eight to five you don't get time to be with your kids. You don't get time to be with your husband. You don't get time to do the things that you want to do. You don't get time to rest. You don't get time to, um, you know, have that date night or whatever because you're just always working or when you get home, you're so tired. Um, that's not a life to live. I, I, I knew that that wasn't a life for me to live. Um, like I said, I was like, there's more to life than having to feel like, like this is it like I just I go to work every single day I get off and it's the same thing same routine and nothing changes um which not to say that having your own business is easy because it's not a lot of people think oh I'm gonna have my own business and then I'm not gonna have to work and it's like no you work even more because it's your own business and because it's something that you're truly passionate about like that's how I am I used to always think like oh man like I'm gonna have you know so much time to do exactly what i want to do and sometimes that still isn't the case i get off work i'm messaging back people or i'm you know having to post and stuff like that um, which there is ways to help with that so if you are a current lash artist or if you are um someone who is looking into getting in the field, make sure you look into business apps and stuff that can really speed up the process for you. Because a lot of times I was doing things like, I think when I first started taking clients, I was doing it from like a book, like a pen and paper. Like I would write in clients and write in the times and write in their names and write in all. And then I finally found my Gloss Genius app that I use and I love that thing. If you're also new to the beauty world, or if you're just needing an app for your uh, clients and services, Gloss Genius is really, really good. I recommend them, it's very good. Um, right now, I'm currently working on building my own website. Yes, I'm so excited about it. I'm not gonna say too much about it because um, putting out stuff and letting someone put bad juju on you is so real like so so real i i used to always tell people like when i was doing things and what i was fixing to do always telling them my next move wrong don't tell people your next move just do it just tell yourself it tell the people that you know are for sure going to motivate you um because people's energies can throw you off and let me tell you this whenever i first started i always thought it was going to be family and close friends that let me try and do everything. No, it's going to be complete strangers who will support you. And it's going to be complete strangers who will go and get a lash set by you and pay you and tip you um, because they don't know you and they're so willing to support you. And sometimes it sucks because you're like, oh, well, that's my family or those are really good friends. I thought they were going to support me. Um, and I'm not here to burst anybody's bubble. I'm not here to, you know, 
say anything negative, um, but it is just, it's true in the industry. If you start anything on your own, people are always so skeptical of it. People are always like, well, how are you going to make money? Or um, what if it falls through? You know, what if it doesn't, you know, um, and that's fine. Let them think their opinions, but always make sure that you are speaking words of love and encouragement and positivity to yourself. I used to be someone who I like, I just, I'm always, like I said earlier, I think we're our biggest critics in general and so whenever I first started I would always tell myself like I just would always beat down on myself and after someone after a client walked out I'd have been like oh I could have done better on that set or oh I just I feel like I could have done more or I just I'm, I was always instead of being like oh wow I got through it I did it and I did everything correct and she was happy when she left and she tip me and you know all the good things I was only worried about the negativity and the response that I was telling myself um so please make sure to always speak kindness and and don't be so quick to bash yourself and kind of talk yourself through it and make yourself feel um important and valued because you are another thing uh whenever now that I have, now that I'm teaching classes and stuff like that, I always have people, you know, tell me like, well, you know, how do you, how do you deal with clients and how do you deal with, you know, just certain things of being in the lash industry? And honestly, my clients are amazing. I've had very few clients who have made me feel like crap or made me feel, you know, uh, like I did a bad job or anything like that. Uh, so client wise I've just been best been blessed with clients I guess you can say uh, but it also depends on who you are as a person um, if you're just trying to do this for a quick buck and you're not really caring about your clients requests and you're not really caring about what they want at all uh, people are gonna be able to tell people are gonna be able to be like well you know you could kind of see it in her work or you could kind of see that she just was kind of rushed and she wasn't really trying to uh, consider what I wanted or you know their lashes fall off super quick or either the lashes don't fall off and you're damaging their lashes and they're coming to me for a removal because you hurt their lashes uh so I always tell people this is not a get rich quick screen like this isn't you're gonna have to work you're gonna have to really want it and you're going to have just like anything you know um just like if you wanted to go learn how to do um I mean, just anything, like a lot of things require you taking uh, extra classes or extra hours. You know, sometimes people are like, sometimes people think, oh, just because you have a it's cosmetology license means like, oh, you're just great at everything. And that's not the case because there's a lot of things in the cosmetology field and we're only taught so much while we're in school. So after that, it's kind of our job to go find whatever we are wanting to do to go find a source that is going to help us grow and also going to make sure we're doing it correctly so um yeah guys i know my story was kind of all over the place <laughs> this is like i said this is my kind of introduction video kind of just wanted to share it with y'all who i am what i do as as a person um so yeah I, eyelashes is going to be what's mainly on my youtube channel but i will also be doing probably some prank videos probably some couple of videos as most of y'all know uh, my partner chris um he's always very funny and energetic online so uh we're gonna try to start doing a little bit more videos for you guys and we're also getting we're we're working on a lot right now both of us are uh, individually and together so i'm excited for y'all to see all the new stuff we have coming and um yeah guys uh if you have any more questions make sure and drop them below in my comments if you want to do like if you want me to do like a q and a or if you want me to do um a video in the day and life of what i do let me know as well make sure and hit that like follow subscribe button i have all of my um social medias linked in uh so make sure and follow me on instagram facebook twitter all of that good stuff and i look forward to making more videos with you guys and i look forward to um kind of sharing my craft with you all and so yeah 
if y'all have any questions make sure I leave them in the comments and I will try to get back to everybody but other than that y'all have a great rest of y'all's Thursday and I will see y'all later bye